Hello and welcome to our second episode of Season 2 ng Class Kirby. My name is Jonas and I'm your lecturer for this online class. But before we do our intro, I would like to give a shout out to all our nurses as well as all our healthcare providers na still continuously combating COVID-19 being in the front line. Our salutations to all of you and it's a heck of a battle and we appreciate your efforts. Once again, this is Class Kirby, Episode 2, Season 2. For this episode, I would like you to understand that nursing is both a science and an art that uses a systematic approach in order to identify and solve potential problems, existing problems, both to individuals that, well, uh, experiences to strive and maintain basic human functioning along the wellness continuum. That's why at this juncture of our online lesson, I would like to present to you our objectives for this discussion. Number one, I would like us to gain understanding about the nursing process and how it is applied to the practice of pharmacology. And number two, I would like us to identify our specific nursing roles in providing medications to our clients. When we talk about the nursing process, it is often defined as an organized, systematic, manner of providing goal-oriented and humanistic care that is both efficient and effective. Simulan natin sa word na organized and systematic manner of providing goal. Often, we hear these words, uh, well, being described or being used together primarily because it is the basic definition of research wherein the practice or the science of nursing is a form of research wherein we are systematically gathering different data specifically to our clientele. It may be individuals, families, or even community for that matter. It is specified based from the definition that it is both efficient and effective. Efficient in a sense that it utilizes resources widely in terms of human time as well as cost resources because the nursing process is a creation of a plan meaning because we have a plan ahead of time prior to carrying it out we have somewhat perceived our needs the things that we're about to do our target our main problem that we are dealing with that's why it makes all of our moves somewhat or all of our movements directed to a particular goal, making all our behaviors, all our movements, as well as actions, even our thoughts, efficient because it is focused. It gives us a focal point. It is effective in a manner that it is relevant to the needs of the patient and it promotes patient satisfaction. As you have already known uh, based from your previous under uh, uh, previous learnings in your uh, theoretical foundations of nursing as well as health assessment that the nursing process is the backbone of the nursing uh, the practice of nursing primarily because every single action that proceeds or that is being done by nurses are all based from this blueprint, from this platform. That's why we are able to determine the effectivity of all our actions. It is a systemic, rational method of planning and providing individualized care to our clientele. Mind you guys, the nursing process is a tailor-fit process wherein we are focusing that particular process on a particular clientele. Yes, there might be behaviors that can be applicable to one patient or one client to the other. However, we cannot employ or we cannot use the same nursing care process that was employed to patient A to another patient primarily because we are acknowledging the uniqueness of every single individual that we consider as our client. Allow me to present to you the purposes of your nursing process. Number one, your nursing process being tailored fit to your clients needs to define the patient's goals. 
I would like you to understand that it is not us that determines the patient goal. Hindi nurses. Mind you, we are clients' partners and we would like them as much as possible to gain autonomy. That's why we are to help them realize kung ano ang kailangan nilang maabot, what is indeed their goals, their physical, emotional, mental, and totality. Ano bang goal nila kaya sila naghahanap ng care. And number two, having identified the patient's goal, we should identify what will be our purpose in order to be of aid to our clients, to our patients in achieving these goals. Number three, since we have a plan, we can uh, provide consistency in terms of the care that we are offering to our patient. This will increase patient satisfaction and also decrease the burnout for us healthcare provider. Primarily because we will not be shooting blank. Ibig sabihin, may guide lahat ng movement natin in everything we do. That's why, again, nursing process is the backbone, is the blueprint of the nursing practice. Next, number four, based from the identified goals of our clients and your roles as the nurse, we can now customize different nursing care interventions which will be tackled along our discussion. Number five, we are acknowledging that our patients has multiple domain that our patients are multifaceted. It's not enough just to treat their physique. It's not enough just to treat their psyche. But we are to treat our patient as a whole, as a, uh, as a human being, as a whole individual. That's why the nursing process, since planning part pa lang, we are considering all the aspects of our clients, we will be able to determine and tackle and approach the client as a whole. And lastly, of course, our goal is to provide quality patient care. That's why we are utilizing the nursing process. Hindi na bago sa inyo pag pinag-usapan ang nursing process that it is composed of five phases which are somewhat related to each other. You have your ad by ad, letter A, which is assessment, letter D, diagnosis, P, planning, letter I, intervention, as and letter E, evaluation, all of which are related to each other. How? Let's discuss them one by one. When we talk about assessment, it provides a significant information, assemble, and establish a client's database. This is the first step of the nursing process where it serves as the platform, the base of every single action that will uh, proceed after your assessment. It serves as the basis on which care is planned, implemented, as well as evaluated. That's why it's considered to be a database. It serves as a baseline data that determines what particular therapeutic regimen is to be employed and it can be used further for our evaluation if all this therapeutic regimen has been effective or not. It is where we collect data regarding our patient's uh, present condition. This includes a systematic, organized collection of the data of your patient. Pag pinag-usapan natin ng data, there are basically two kinds of data. Number one is your subjective and number two is your subjective. Based from your previous understanding, subjective data are basically data that originates from your patient. These are feelings emotions, perceptions of your clients that you as the healthcare provider or as the nurse cannot observe. Ito yung mga personal na nanggagaling sa inyong pasyente ergo the word subjective also known as symptoms. Mga simptomas, ano ba ang nararamdaman ng iyong pasyente? That's why the source of your information for your subjective data are, is your patient. On the other hand, objective data are information that are being observed by us nurses or different healthcare providers. These are termed to be signs. Pag pinag-usapan natin ng subjective data, you have your interview, you have different manners of collecting your data, which will be further elaborated as we go on with our discussion. All you need to understand as of the moment is that subjective data are also called symptoms and objective data are known to 
to be your signs. There are different types of assessment based from the purpose and the time. Simula tayo sa initial comprehensive assessment. Based from the word itself, initial, first time mo palang ma-encounter ang patient and you do not have any background data about your patient. That's why you need to perform comprehensive assessment. Pag sinabi natin comprehensive assessment from head to toe, total, what are we trying to get? We would like to get the client's perception about his or her own health with regards to the different body parts or system, the past health history of your client, the family history of your client, his or her lifestyle, health practices, which will include both subjective and objective data to be gathered in a step-to-step -step physical examination. Ibig sabihin, wala ka kasing idea. That's why you would like to get, you would like to somewhat extract as much as information you can from your client. That's the purpose of your initial comprehensive assessment. Partial con or ongoing assessment, on the other hand, occurs after you have performed your initial comprehensive assessment. Any problems that will be identified from your initial comprehensive assessment will be the focus of your partial or ongoing assessment. Meaning, any problems that were detected in the client's body or holistic health patterns are reassessed in order for us to determine changes. What do I mean? We would like to determine deterioration, progression, or even improvement of your client's health. Ibig sabihin, when your patient walked into your unit and you don't have any idea or, or data from your client, gagawa ka muna ng initial comprehensive assessment. However, the next day, you came to your patient, you would like to determine if there are any changes on her or his physical or entire condition. Anong kailangan mong gawin? It will not be efficient if you are to perform comprehensive assessment every single day. That's why in order to be more efficient and to be more effective in carrying out your duties, gagawin mo ano bang na-identify mong problema sa umpisa. Yun na lang ang magiging focus mo. Kaya tawag doon partial or ongoing assessment. A more targeted approach in terms of assessing your client is your focus or problem oriented. It's a thorough assessment of your client's particular problem and does not cover areas that are not related to that particular problem. For example, your client has complaints of gastric irritation after taking in paracetamol or whatever oral drug that may be. Now, for focus assessment, you will only provide attention to every single detail that might be related to your gastrointestinal system. Ano po bang kinain mo bago ka na sumakit ang tiyan? Ano bang ininom mo? What is your elimination pattern? And what other medications might have uh, or have you taken that might have contributed to that particular gastric irritation? Ibig sabihin, hindi mo natatanungin kung masakit ang ulo or there are any other pains related or is, is being experienced by your patient. Rather, you will focus your attention on probing the gastrointestinal region because again, that is your focus, that is your problem. Kaya gumagamit tayo ng problem-oriented assessment. And lastly, you have your emergency assessment wherein you are doing assessment on an emergency basis which requires or which uh, uh, somewhat uh, puts an emphasis to the concept of time. Emergency assessment is a very rapid assessment performed during life-threatening situations. For example, you are faced to a client who is undergoing uh, CPR or resuscitation. Okay, You will now assess your client if he or she will indeed need several pharmacologic intervention. Dapat you will be able to assess your client immediately to perform that particular action. And if the patient will require epinephrine shot during ACNS as well. So you will perform emergency assessment for that matter. So what are the specific steps in order for you to prepare your assessment? Number one, you need to understand in order for you to be efficient in the care or in every single nursing action that you are doing, you always need to be prepared. Paano? You need to understand the steps of health assessment. You have your CVOD. 
or your collection, validation, organization, and lastly, documentation. Punta muna tayo sa data collection. What are your methods of data collection? Number one, if you would like to have or extract subjective data, meaning symptoms, your client's perceptions, feelings, current emotions, you need to perform interview. Interview is a planned and purposeful conversation. Hindi ka pupunta sa pasyente lang in order for you to have a chit chat. Rather, you would you have a particular purpose in mind and that is to determine your client's perception of his physical or, or health condition. That's why you will elicit a dialogue, an interview. To al- This will allow the nurse to obtain specific information necessary to proceed to the next step, which is diagnosis as well as planning. This will also promote a nurse and client relationship because one of the purposes why you are having a dialogue or or an interview with the client is for him or her to have or for you to establish trusting relationship, meaning you would like to establish rapport. This allow the this allows the client to receive information and to participate in the problem identification as well as goal setting. Mind you, if you will your patient or the nursing process is again custom fit to your client, meaning uh, na ayon sa kanilang uniqueness. And in order for them to be involved in the patient care, for them to be uh, uh, participative, in order for you to gain their participation, kailangan mo silang involved sa planning, sa assessment phase pa lang. That's why interview will be beneficial in order for you or for them to be some or, or for them to gain this feeling that somewhat they are involved that somewhat their concerns or it's not somewhat their concern is the focus of our nursing process and this will help the nurse identify areas of specific investigations during other parts of assessment number two will be through observation ang ibig nating sabihin dito we would like to have objective data we are now to use different senses of the body such as vision, hearing, touch, and smell na napag-aralan natin during our health assessment subject. It uses your physical examination and your techniques such as inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. You need to understand different units of measure in order for you to have a quantifiable observation such as uh, you have your unit of measure for your blood pressure, you have your millimeters mercury, you have your weight measurement, pounds, kilograms, and so on. Yun ang tinatawag nating observations. You can also gather data from your patient's records through your laboratory as well as diagnostic procedures. All should be present in your patient's chart. But mind you, you need or or you need to uh, uh, be sensitive in terms of the Data Privacy Act. You need to understand whom this data particularly belongs to. Kaya dapat, kung hindi ka naman involved sa patient care, you have no right to access that particular data. Uh, more so, to process that particular data. Again, let me remind you, when we are doing health assessment, there are different process in order for you to gather data. Number one, interview. Number two, through observation which will include physical examination as well as the use of different senses of the body. And number three, you have the review of your laboratories as well as different diagnostic procedures. After you have acquired your data, there might be several data that might be contradicting with each other or does not support each other. For example, the patient reported pain. However, upon observing your client, there are no objective cues of pain. So in order for you to establish connection between this data, you need to validate the data. How do you validate the data? Well, validating data is a method of confirming if the data collected is reliable and accurate. Data needs to be validated if, number one, 
you have found a gap between the subjective and objective data. Hindi nagjajive yung na-observe mo at sinasabi ng patient mo. That's why you need to further validate. Number two, if there are inconsistencies with regards to the client's responses to different questions that you are asking him or her. And number three, if there are inconsistencies with regards to your observation and physical examinations in measurement. Imagine, Okay, upon checking the patient's record, the patient's height is only 150 centimeters. However, however, upon seeing the patient, you have already observed without even using any measuring device that your patient is incredibly tall, probably measuring 6 feet more. Alright, so your data, based from what you have found, there is inconsistency. Therefore, you need to validate your data. Once again, we not need. Uh, we are not only to rely on what we can see on the patient's chart because there might still be human errors to which. That's why you need to validate your data. One of the major influences is the patient's weight. That's why you need to be accurate. You need to be sure or else it might cause a different effect to your client. Kaya dapat vina-validate natin yung mga data na to. How do you do validation? Number one, recheck your own data through reassessment. If you have doubt, it will not harm you to recheck your data. It will be beneficial to both you and your client. However, you need to document every single action that you are doing. Number two, clarify data by asking your client additional questions. Number three, you can very data to other healthcare provider, especially if there will be times that you are unsure of your findings. And number four, compare your data, both your subjective and your objective data, to different standards in order for you to somewhat check for discrepancies. Siyempre, lastly will be your documentation because again, whatever you have done, which is not documented, is good as undone. Ibig sabihin, kung ano ang hindi na-document, hindi mo nagawa. That's why documentation is very important. Several uh, reminders in order for you to be protected with your documents are the following. Document legibly, meaning print it neatly using a non-erasable ink. Number two, use correct grammar and spelling and use only approved abbreviations which will be tackled on the next uh, discussions. Avoid wordiness and be direct to the point. Use phrases instead of sentences in order to be direct. Record data findings, not uh, uh, write entries objectively. All right. Next, record your client's understanding and problems and specifically record data findings. That is for your assessment phase. Tandaan, C-V-O-D, COVOD, okay? That's collect. Okay, validate, organize, and document your data. After you have finally performed or gathered your data or you have finally assessed your client, the second step will be for you to come up with a nursing diagnosis. A nursing diagnosis is the clinical act of identifying problems. To diagnose in nursing means to analyze the assessment or the information that you have gathered through assessment and derive meaning based from your analysis. What is the major purpose of your nursing diagnosis now? It is for you to identify the patient's healthcare needs and to prepare diagnostic statements. What is the difference between a nursing diagnosis and a medical diagnosis? Your medical diagnosis is the reason why the patient came in. So it will not change up until the time that he or she will be discharged. However, your nursing uh, diagnosis, the center of your nursing diagnosis is the patient itself. That's why when the, uh, his or himself, that's why when there are changes with the client's condition, your nursing diagnosis will also change. That's why your nursing diagnosis will vary from day to day or from time to, to, uh, from time, to time. This is based from the analysis and assessment of your data. Next, it might show actual or potential alterations to the patient's functions based from the assessment of your clinical condition. 
Mind you, you may have more than one nursing diagnosis for that matter. Kung ilan ang ma-identify mong problem, ganun karami ang nursing diagnosis na pwede mong ma-identify. There are several types of nursing diagnosis depending on their types. Or, or on the manner that they are appearing to your client. Number one, you have your actual nursing diagnosis. The, meaning, the client has an actual problem present during the time of assessment that you have identified. The pre, uh, meaning, there are present signs and symptoms. A classic example of your actual nursing diagnosis is Fatigue related to increased job demands and personal stress as evidenced by your client's statement of feeling exhausted and inability to perform usual uh, uh, tasks and responsibilities. Meaning, merong actual problem. For example, your patient uh, manifested difficulty of breathing or you have seen your patient gasping for air after administering an intravenous injection. That is an actual health or actual nursing diagnosis. Difficulty in breathing. Kasi may actual problem ang iyong patient. Next will be, there is no actual problem. However, you the patient is now transitioning from being ill to being healthy. Your patient is moving from the health care continuum. That's why okay, you can also have wellness or health promotion diagnosis where the patient verbalized desire to increase well-being and to actualize human health potential. Examples of which is the readiness for enhanced sleep pattern or or readiness for en enhanced self-care the patient verbalized that nurse i am ready to uh, understand how to inject my insulin on my own that's why you can now have a diagnosis readiness for enhanced self-care usually these types of diagnosis are being utilized when the patient is about to be discharged meaning wala nang masyadong actual nursing diagnosis and the patient is now ready to transition from being fully dependent to the healthcare provider to have to gaining his or her own responsibility and autonomy towards his or her own healthcare. On the other hand, if a patient is particularly vulnerable or there are risk in order uh, for the patient to develop actual problems, pwede tayong gumamit ng risk diagnosis. These are situations in which the patient is vulnerable to an actual diagnosis. Pero mind you, wala pang actual problem. However, we are anticipating this because of the presence of several risk factors. Kaya, pwede natin silang gamitin. An example of your risk diagnosis is, pote, is posted in this particular slide. The following are, are common types of nursing diagnosis related to pharmacology. Number one, deficient knowledge. Number two will be non-compliance. Punta muna tayo sa deficient knowledge. When we say deficient knowledge, it is important for you to understand that one of the major responsibility of us nurses is to reinforce the patient's knowledge. That's why in order for them to be compliant to their care, we should let them understand why they are taking that particular medication, the purpose of medication administration, when and how are you to take that particular medication, up till when are you to take that particular medication. Those are our particular interventions when it comes to this nursing diagnosis. Next is non-compliance. Probably brought about by insufficient knowledge, hindi sila masyadong na-educate, tendency is they will not be compliant or they, there might be several factors that might uh, result to their non-compliance. Uh, classic uh, example or scenario where non-compliance is being practiced, if there are medications that are being taken in a chronic or prolonged manner, example is your TB dots, your, your medications for combating tub uh, tuberculosis, you also have maintenance medication because it is taken on a chronic manner, mang matagalan. Tendency is there might be times that your patient is non-compliant. Another, if your patient is taking pills and he or she does not have the uh, enough or sufficient knowledge to comply on how to perform uh, this or how to take these uh, medications, 
Okay, there might be non-compliance on their part. Next will be ineffective health maintenance, ineffective uh, protection, ineffective therapeutic regimen, as well as risk for injury. Especially if your patient, again, goes going back to our concern, has insufficient knowledge. That is for your nursing diagnosis. After you have assessed your client and now you have determined your point or your areas or your particular problems that you would like to tackle, we should now come to the point that we are about to come up with plans. When we talk about planning, it involves determining beforehand the strategies or courses of actions that needs to be taken before implementation or before acting. The purpose of your planning is for you to identify uh, goals and nursing interventions. Number two is for you to direct patient care and activities. Number three is for you to establish continuity of care because you will be able to have a total, a whole picture of your client's care plan. And number four is for you to allow the delegation of specific activities, which you will understand more when you go to your fourth year on how you are to delegate these particular tasks. When we talk about planning, this is characterized by goal setting as well as uh, uh, outcomes. In this process, you need to formulate and document measurable, realistic, client-focused, or what we call smart plans, which will be providing basis for our evaluation in terms of drug administration. Kasi ang focus natin, pharmacology. Planning also includes development of nursing interventions that will be used to assess the client in meeting his or her or identified outcomes. Well, when it comes to planning, you need to understand that we are identifying goals depending on the time or the duration when we are expecting to achieve these goals. Meron tayong dalawang classification. You have your short-term as well as long-term goals. Actually, you cannot standardize. For example, sinabi natin na three days below is considered short-term. No, there are no uh, parameters for that. However, Usually, short-term goals, depending on your uh, uh, main objective or main outcome, can be achieved in mere hours or even days, while long-term goals will usually take weeks or months. Usually, short-term goals are for the patient to gain understanding, gain, uh, uh, demonstrate uh, behaviors. However, for long-term goals is for you to adapt uh, uh, healthcare behaviors, healthcare patterns that will be usually taking a longer period of time in order for you to achieve. So those are your two types of goals. After you have identified your uh, goals, we need to set our priority. This is the process wherein we are establishing a preferential sequence on addressing the problems. Kasi there will be time that you will be able to identify multiple problems. And you cannot tackle them at the same time. That's why you need to identify which takes higher priority. Sino bang una nating dapat uh, magawa? That's why you need to be able to cluster them accordingly. There are several ways on how to cluster them. Number one, depending on how urgent they are. For example, life-threatening problems usually are, are treated to be high priority. Those that are acute illness or impaired in coping abilities that may result to delayed development uh, may be considered medium priority. Low priority, on the other hand, are those that arises from normal development uh, and needs minimal assistance. That's one way of clustering or prioritizing. Second way is for you to utilize CAB or ABCs of nursing depending on the uh, problem of the patient. This depends on the focus of your problem uh, which you will be able uh, to, uh, to further understand if you have the theoretical knowledge on what exactly happens within the patient's body given a particular scenario. Number three, based from Abraham Maslow's theory, you have physical need. Number two, psychological need. Uh, you have safety, love and belongingness, self-esteem, and self-actualization. So based from those clustering, you will be able to identify which of the following problems needs to be prioritized. 
Number two will be the part where you are to plan nursing interventions. This is to direct the activities you are to do to be carried out in the implementation phase. Mamaya pag-usapan natin sa intervention or implementation phase the different types of interventions, namely independent, dependent, as well as collaborative or interdependent. However, I would like you to understand the purpose of uh, these established goals and outcomes as well as interventions is for you to provide direction when providing interventions. A clearly, de a clearly stated desired outcomes or plan will provide ease in terms of intervening and will provide direction to your nursing care. And number two, it will serve as criteria and evaluation that you will use at the latter portion of the nursing process wherein you are to determine the effectivity of your implemented therapeutic regimen. Number three is the actual part where you are to write the nursing care plan or the nursing plan of care wherein this will be the blueprint of the nursing process serving as a guide on whatever actions that you are about to do it should be nurse uh, it should be uh, patient centered also considering the nurse's welfare it should be supported by a scientific rationale now let me just refresh your understanding about your plans ano ba ang dapat included sa ating plan uh, apat number 1 you should have your subject it is the noun it is the client what part of the client? What specific target do you have in mind? Anyone or anything to whom which or uh, which your actions are directed to? Okay? Meaning, the patient will. Patient being the noun. Okay? The, the patient's uh, temperature. So that is basically the noun. Ano ang gusto mong baguhin? That's the subject. Number two, the verb. What would you like to do? It specifies the action the client is to perform. What are you expecting? The, pi the patient will gain understanding. Gain understanding. Yun yung verb mo when it comes to your plan. Next is conditions. This explains what, where, when, and how you are to do that. And lastly, criteria. This will help you for evaluating. This indicates the standard by which a performance is to be evaluated. This is the level by which the client will perform specified behaviors. Para ma-determine mo ang effectivity ng care that you have rendered to your client. Next will be implementation. The purpose of implementation is for you to carry out the plans or uh, uh, the plans or different interventions that you have identified previously to help the client attain the goals and achieve optimum uh, level of health. This will require three things for the nurse. Number one, knowledge. This is the intellectual capability of the nurse. When we are to administer medication, you need to understand what the medication is all about. What is the active ingredient of the medication? How can the medication affect the body? All of those will be your concerns. But it is not limited to to those things you also need to have the knowledge on how to administer it to your client what will you do if in case there will be problems all these factors uh, should be present prior to administering uh, care to your clay, uh, patient particularly administering medication number two you should have the technical skills because there are some or multiple ways as discussed during our first discussion on how we are to administer medication merong itinuturok may mga techniques on how you are to perform medication administration you should be well versed to these kinds of treatments and procedures and lastly you should have communication skills because when doing medication administration, we are not only providing, giving medications to our client, but we should communicate with them because we need their participation comes this particular procedures. 
when we do implementation, the following are the process that we are providing or doing to our clients. Number one, mag assess ka o kaya mag re assess ka ng patient. Number two, you will determine the nurse's need for assistance and setting priorities because there might be times that you are about to administer a particular medication that you cannot do on your own. That's why you need the assistance of another healthcare provider. Number three, performing nursing interventions and supervising delegated care. Number four will be again recording and documenting all the actions that you have taken. When we talk about implementation in the field of pharmacology, there are usually three major uh, nursing intervention that we can provide to our clients. Number one, syempre pag magbibigay ka ng gamot, it should be properly administered. Later on, on our next discussions, I will somewhat give you a background on how you are to perform different medication administration together with the techniques and nursing responsibilities that accompanies them. Dapat malaman natin yon. Next! There might be medication that might not be comfortable to your patient. Upon injecting, upon inserting, we should be able to provide comfort measures. And lastly, it's not just the patient that we need to educate, but in order to uh, secure compliance of the patient, you need to involve both the patient and the family when you are performing or uh, doing education or uh, uh, information dissemination to our clientele. Let me just give you a background or a review on your implementation or your different types of intervention. You have your independent nursing intervention wherein uh, we are uh, we can do it on our own. For example, the patient reported pain upon injecting a particular medication. What independent nursing intervention can you do? You can provide therapeutic touch in order to reduce pain. Those are interventions that does not necessitate a presence of another healthcare provider or even your physician. Next will be dependent nursing intervention. Mind you, in the hospital, as nurses, we are only there to administer ordered medication. We are not the one to determine which or what particular medication is needed to be administered to our clients. Andun lang tayo to administer. That's why determining the medication is highly dependent to our physician. Hindi tayo pwedeng mag-administer unless ordered. You also have those that needs collaboration between different healthcare providers and we term them as collaborative or interdependent nursing intervention. Last part will be evaluation. Pag pinag-usapan natin ng evaluation, this is also similar to an assessment. However, we are now comparing our data before an intervention and after the intervention. In order to do this, the following are needed to be done or the following steps are needed to be performed. Number one, collect data again. Number two, compare this data and compare it uh, based from your pre-established goal or outcome criteria. Number three, analyze the reasons why you have done these things and modify the plan if needed. How or what will be your criteria? Merong tatlong pwedeng maging results ng iyong action if you have completely met your goal, partially met your goal, or completely unmet your goal. Depending on your, your, your results, that will be the basis of your next action or if you need to reinforce, redo, modify, or completely change your nursing care plan. And this is the part where you will be able to identify new problems or nursing diagnosis which will require you to reactivate your nursing process. So recap tayo in order to wrap it up. For today's discussion, we have focused on the nursing process wherein we have defined it as an organized systematic manner of providing goal-oriented care that is both efficient and effective. We also know that your nursing process is comprised of five facets, namely your assessment, diagnosis, uh, planning, intervention, as well as evaluation. Pag pumunta tayo sa assessment, it provides significant information as a uh, pertaining to your client's healthcare that will be assembled in order to establish a particular database. There are two types of data, objective and subjective. Subjective being symptoms galing sa pasyente. Objective, those are observable by the nurses, meaning signs. 
you have four activities in, uh, in order to do assessment. You have collection, validation, organization, as well as documentation. And also, there are different types of assessment based from the time and purpose. You have initial comprehensive, partial ongoing, focus or problem oriented, and lastly, emergency assessment. After your assessment, we can now proceed to your diagnosis. Diagnosis is the part wherein we are clinically identifying different problems experienced by your patient. May tatlong types. Actual, may actual na problema. Number two, risk. Walang actual na problema. However, the patient have several risk factors that makes them highly vulnerable to develop an actual problem. And number three, health and wellness wherein the patient is now transitioning from the assumption of being sick to being well. Gumagalaw siya sa healthcare continuum. Next is planning. This is the part wherein we are determining strategies or courses of action to be taken prior to the implementation of the nursing care. Fourth is implementation. This is the actual carrying out of the planned nursing intervention in order to help the patient attain the pre-established goals as well as regain optimum level of health. Usually for pharmacology, there are three major nursing intervention na pwede natin gawin. Number one, provide drug or uh, administer drug appropriately. Number two, provide comfort measures. And number three, reinforce knowledge by providing patient and family education. And finally, similar to an assessment, you need to evaluate. This is an assessment of the patient's response to nursing interventions or different pharmacologic interventions that you have performed. Well, that is the nursing process. Once again, this is Jonas reminding everyone that learning should always be a fun experience. Music